So let's begin our time together today with our gathering hymn. It's an Easter hymn because it's Easter season on the church calendar. Jesus Christ is risen today. of Iowa. Welcome here to Grace Lutheran Church and welcome today to a service of worship that once again brings us back to the earliest days of the church and what it was like for those very first Christ followers right after the resurrection. Peter, the Bible says, never missed an opportunity to talk about Jesus. And he generally had one thing in particular that he wanted to make sure that he offered to them, and that is hope. That's what we're going to focus on today, talking about Jesus to others and offering them hope. So thank you for being a part of this service of worship. Why don't we move into God's presence today with the apostolic reading. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. All right, let's pray our prayer of the day together. This prayer does point us to the, in the direction of our theme for worship today. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading for today is introduced this way. Through the proclamation of Christ's death and resurrection, God is offering them forgiveness and restoration in Jesus' name. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 3. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. So the Bible tells us that after the resurrection of Jesus, after that very first Easter morning, Peter never missed an opportunity to talk about Jesus. 
Peter had a passion for Christ, you might say. If you and I had been there, we might have been tempted to take some of the credit for ourselves. A man who had been lame all his life was now walking and leaping and praising God. And it was Peter who had spoken those magic words, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. It wasn't magic, of course, but many of those onlookers would surely describe it that way. And it was Peter who had taken this man by the hand and raised him to his feet. No wonder people were looking at him as if he were a god himself. Peter, though, wouldn't have any of it. He and the other disciples did have a special power, but it wasn't their own power. It was the power of the risen Christ. It was important that people understood that. Peter had a passion for pointed, pointing people to Christ. I sat with a good friend of mine, a guy who's been a, a close friend of mine for many, many years, not that long ago. And we talked about a number of things, as we usually do. But one thing that we always talk about whenever we're together is baseball cards. Not because they're important to me, but because they mean something to him. In fact, they mean everything to him. They are his passion. If someone asked you, what, what is your passion? How would you answer that question? The Bible tells us today that for Peter, his passion was pointing people to Christ. For my friend Doug, it was a passion for baseball cards. Peter had a passion for the Son of God and what that Son had come to mean in his life and the lives of everyone who followed him. It's not me, he would say, but Christ by whose power this man walks. It's ironic, I think. We understand when people have a passion for sports or for music or even science or business maybe, but sometimes we're turned off by people who have a genuine passion for God. Peter had that kind of passion. He never missed an opportunity to talk about Jesus. But one more thing. Peter offered people hope. Repent then, he said to his listeners, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Times of refreshing. I think we're all in need of times like that. Peter doesn't leave anyone dangling over the pit, talking only about repentance. No, he speaks of the rewards of repentance the rewards of removing the barriers that are keeping them from experiencing the power of the resurrected Christ. He calls it a time of refreshing. We live in a time when unusual people in increasing numbers, rock stars, writers, athletes, politicians are finding their lives refreshed by Christ. I have a friend who has been struggling mightily lately for a good portion of her life. 
she has been standing on the edge of a cliff she's lost almost everything of the things that you and i would find most important in life her addiction to alcohol has cost her almost every single one she came in off the cliff before she lost that last one or two things that are so very dear to all of us because she went for 28 days of inpatient treatment and it was her higher power you can ask her and she'll tell you but it was her higher power looking out for her that really saved her life that kept her together with her children the last things that she had left after a, a life that was almost totally sucked away from her by an addiction to alcohol all kinds of people are developing a passion for christ Maybe not the kind of passion that Peter felt, but a passion nonetheless. That's what my friend has at this point in her life. People have tasted the world, and it has not satisfied their soul. In fact, it sucked most of the life away from them only christ can bring lasting satisfaction to our souls and so today i want to invite you to refresh your soul believe in the power of the resurrected christ it'll take you all the way back to that very first easter morning it will remove any barrier in your life that might deprive you of his love the kind of love that will give and refresh your life open your life to that refreshing power of jesus develop a passion for him all other passions are a lesser pursuit a passion for him will refresh you in this world and even in the world to come amen our hymn of the day to say amen 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 
So, alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God, we know that you hear the cries of those who are in need, and you answer them in their distress. Lord, we pray this day that you would grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion, and we pray that you would nurse them back to health and to wholeness. Lord, we ask you in these moments to please be close to the hearts of all who are lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we thank you for your good and generous and faithful offering support. It's the only way, the only way, that the ministry of grace is able to to continue. Let's listen to our offering hymn, shall we? gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me and again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So, at this point, you can pick up the piece of bread that's on a napkin close by, and either now or after a bit, you can take a bite of that piece of bread, or you can eat the whole piece. And as you do, you can know that this is the body of Christ given for you. And then the same with the juice. You can pick the cup up at this point. You can drink all of it. You can take a sip of it. You can do it now or you can do it after a little bit as you wish. But when you do, you can know that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. So, uh, please join me now in this prayer of welcome. O 
oh God, make this congregation a sanctuary of acceptance for all, that together we may share your dream of peace. Bless those gathered here, those who are absent, and those we have yet to welcome. Amen. Please receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending him. Today we really went all the way back to that empty tomb on that very first Easter morning. Think about it, maybe it was a little chilly outside, kind of like today. But that was a seminal moment for Peter because from that moment on, he never missed an opportunity to talk about Jesus. He had a passion for Christ. That's a common question these days. What is your passion? If someone asked you, what would you say? What would your answer be? Maybe we all need to have a passion for Christ that's something like Peter's. Why would that be? Because it enabled Peter to offer hope to the people that he met. And honestly, that's what Easter is all about for every single one of us. My friend will tell you that. She knows that the significance of Easter is that she has a guiding light that goes ahead of her no matter how dark it is wherever she's at she knows that she has a higher power that promises her life in this world but also in the world to come and honestly that was the only way out for her from her addiction to alcohol. Hope, ladies and gentlemen, comes right along with a passion for Christ. And we're so happy that you joined us for worship today. So, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. Alleluia. Now go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.